friends, welcome to the show, The Breaker 2.0. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, and we're believing for breakthrough in every area of your life as we start this new year in your finances, your health, relationships, in your spiritual walk with Jesus Christ. Today, I have a very special guest, Prophet Leon Priya from South Africa, great friend of mine, true prophet of the Lord, uh, a general in the making in the continent of Africa. Uh, but this man I got today, we're going to talk about breakthrough in spiritual realms and realities. So can you begin to ping your friends, bring them in the broadcast, share this link, and get ready for revelation that's going to bless your life today. Prophet Leon, God bless you. Welcome to the show, Breaker 2.0. Thank you so much, my friend, Pastor Ben. And uh, it is a privilege, it's an honor to be on this show. I don't take it lightly. I believe it's going to reach a lot of people. I believe God is doing something totally new in the realm of video and TV and broadcasting. And uh, uh, I'm excited to be on and just getting into things of especially, when, you know, when you speak dimensions, uh, realities, realms, you speak in my language and I, I love it. Well, praise God. We're, we're definitely speaking to the right person. Uh, real quick, you're in South Africa, born and raised in South Africa, and I love that you're not leaving South Africa. You know, a lot of people, you know, they tend <laughs> to right. want to flee to the UK or to the United States, etc. But God has really raised you up in South Africa. What is the spiritual climate like in South Africa and Africa? Because here in America, I'm based in the United States. I've been in 60 countries. You know, sometimes we can say, oh, that's African spirituality or that's, you know, a little too African, right? It's not Western, but guys, the Bible is from Africa in the Middle East. The Bible is an Eastern religion, uh, Judaism, Christianity. So what's the spiritual climate like of Christianity, of believers in South Africa and in Africa? Well, you know, this is saying that, you know, Christianity came to Africa and it was spiritual then it went to America and it became a business. And uh, but uh, <laughs> so you asked me what the client is and the whole uh, or the, the the climate is and the whole um, atmosphere. It's lovely, uh, really. To be honest, yes, I know this. A lot of people think of Africa as darkness, and I think it is a. Um, it is, it is really just a perception. Yes, there's a lot of traditional stuff. There's a lot of witchcraft. But you know, where the darkness is greater, the grace is greater, the glory is greater. And I believe that partly being a persecuted country and a communistic uh, uh, rule and uh, th uh, theocratic, uh, not a theocratic, a, 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 um, just a uh, really um, uh, a communistic uh, rule of uh, political side, um, it has brought the church together. And there's really a great unity. So, um, you know, I think a lot of people overlook in, in, in South Africa, there's something pure in South Africa specifically with Christianity. You know, there's something still pure in the move of God. There's a people are born with a fear of God. Even in Africa, people are born with a fear of God. So there's this reverential, natural, inherent fear of God that uh, I think is very precious. Wow. And of course, in America and many Western countries, we're losing the fear of the Lord, respect for ministers, respect for God, holy reverence. And uh, there really is a comeback of the fear of God. How important is it as a minister? Uh, like I said earlier, God's really raised you up as a young general, you know, in the continent of Africa. But for me, I've realized the more promotion or notoriety influence I have, the more fear of the Lord I have, because it really is a God-fearing thing. It's not that I can't mess this up, I can't mess this up, but is I don't ever want to mess this up. But how important is it to have the fear of the Lord as the Lord raises us up? Well, I think, you know, I think both maybe um, you can maybe testify to as well. I can definitely, but I think all of us as ministers had had premature exposure you know i know we speak about and saying it's a killer but the reality is all of us were prematurely exposed and we learned by being thrown into the deep waters and uh you know so i just i just have a have a have a um have a uh uh a a a, a, a principle that i want to live by which is to not go to the stage but to the secret place um not to go to the 
pulpit, but go to the altar, you know, uh, not to go to the stage, but go to the altar and stay in my secret place. And whenever I feel personally, when I feel like things are too good to be true, it usually is too good to be true. Not everything that glitters is gold, um, you know, so uh, not everything is as it seems. Um, when God promotes me, and I'll speak a little bit about it tonight, is I want God to promote me. I don't want me to promote me. You know, and I think that is one of the dangers of 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 uh, commercialized Christianity is that we promote ourselves and we think heaven's approval is social media likes and uh, following, and uh, that is not heaven's approval. You know, there are still people whom God approves and whom God disapproves, and whom God visits. I'm going to touch a little bit tonight on when God visits a man. And what is the what is the in the, the the evident signs that or undeniable signs when God visits a man? I think we have missed that. We promote ourselves, we push ourselves, and we lose the fear of God. In retrospect, we lose the the reverential fear of God and the incredible privilege it is to be used by God. You know. Um, uh, so, so uh, we've that that visitation. I believe we're entering into a year of visitations. Amen and amen. Well, early you said, Prophet, that uh, premature exposure. I mean, I got, I was a pastor's kid. I got thrown into the ministry. God called me, I believe, at 19. But I, I think many times, was that too early? Was that was I too young? I, I look at the life of the disciples. They're all teenagers. They became yeah. apostles as teenagers, the apostles of the founding church. Uh, but in terms of premature exposure, as we're talking about breakthrough in spiritual realms, and realities uh you know how did you deal with that possible premature exposure uh being swept into the lord being called by god at a young age with all these pressures of life how did you deal with that how did you break through in that you know um i had a uh i had a principle i lived by which was uh you know Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all, and these righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. That's one of the first verses that the Lord gave me. And the secret place has been the, the um, centralized point of my preaching. I understand Jesus has to be, but, you know, let's get a, a lot of people want to be religious in that aspect. Of course, Jesus is, but the centralized theme or the underlying theme, if I can say it like that, through the gospel that the Lord has given me and the message he's given me has always been to maintain the power of the secret place. So that is something that I've just birthed into my life. You know, when I was put into ministry, I had a spiritual father that told me, I'll never open doors for you. You get on your knees and you pray and God must open doors. The heaven must approve you. And as tough it was, it was because I had other spiritual brothers from other spiritual fathers and they were given invitations, like 200, 300 invitations, just given it and doors were open for them. But I thank God for that because it pushed me into a place where I really had to depend on the Lord. And, and I would say for years, I've spent in the secret place of fasting and prayer and not being legalistic but just uh just um maintaining that principles and disciplines of fasting prayer 40 days water fast 21 day water fast seeking the lord you know uh spending hours in the glory and the manifest presence and the tangible presence of god and i would say that is the place that my ministry was birthed from and i believe that is the place that determines our longevity and ministry a lot of people ha doesn't have that foundation so when when the popularity comes when the fame comes when the money comes when the gold comes and the glitter comes they they tend to fall for that and they don't understand the basic principles of you know humility we were speaking about it earlier humility genuineness uh, just you know genuine principles having brotherhood in 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 the kingdom and uh not running off to fame not everything that shines is god not everything that glitters is gold and um uh you know so that is a saying i've learned long ago and i've fallen into the trap but the holy spirit would always pull me back to the secret place it's amazing sometimes i would close all the doors that that has been opened uh, you know uh, sometimes you want to know what is the devil what is god you know just shut everything and you will know what is what is you know just make it easier and I would get back into the secret place, get to the source. And that's where the Lord would always lift me. Wow, that's powerful. And I love what you shared about your spiritual father. He didn't open any doors for you. He said, you got to get on your knees. You have to seek God for yourself. Now, uh, you've been in ministry about two decades, almost two decades, maybe more. Um, you know, I've been in ministry currently 14 years as a PK my whole life now, in a sense. But uh, as we're talking about breakthrough spiritual realms and realities, 
when did you begin to experience the power of God? Uh, has it was it always like that? Because because you were called as a prophet, no, or because no. you're South African, right? Uh, because no, you're no, in no, Africa. No. But how, how and when did you begin to experience the power of God on your life? For me, it was it was it was different phases. But no, I didn't have the power in the beginning. I would watch, man. I would watch generals of God waving their jackets and people falling over. I'd be like, I wanted to. I wanted that. I remember laying hands on people. Nothing happened. Nothing. And uh, you know, I began to seek God, fasted, prayed. That brought a bit of an anointing. But when we speak about dimensions and spiritual realities, God began to introduce me to certain generals, certain men of God that I would have to honor. And the moment I honored them, they would, I would get access or God would allow me to access their adereth, their mantle. And then that anointing would come upon my ministries and I would, and I would begin to meet their God. You know, like Paul says, I pray to my God that my God may supply your need, not your God may supply, because your God hasn't been yeah. working. If I can speak of the level of revelation of what people have of their God, but that my God supply your needs. So we have all have a revelation of God and that is limited by our understanding and access and our access is determined by our clothing, our garments, our adereth, and our adereth and our garments is determined by whom we honor. You know, so when I caught the revelation of honor, which was only really like four or five years into my salvation, that was only when doors truly began to open and I truly began to receive importation. Wow. I love what you just shared, Prophet, because honor is, is my language. It's the uh, currency of heaven. And um, you're saying honor began to open up doors of impartation, give you access. And uh, and it was later on in your life as you came to the Lord. I know for me, uh, I did not like the gifts of the Spirit. I was against a lot of people. In fact, I didn't like Pastor Benny Hinn, and guess what? Now he's my pastor. <laughs> but when I first started in the Lord, I was pretty much like a cessationist. But the Lord increased wow. my hunger, gave me an appetite of the spiritual things, because God is one to take us deeper. And that's what this show today will probably on the Priya breakthrough wow. in spiritual realms and realities. Are you ready for access? Are you ready to honor the Lord? Listen, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Prophet Leon is going to share more secrets and how to access the glory realm and breakthrough in spiritual realms and realities. Are you ready for God to connect you? with different generals and those that have gone before us. We'll see you right after this break. consider becoming a financial partner with me and Benlin Ministries. You see, we are committed to seeing the Great Commission fulfilled in our time through our online social media events and as well through our revivals and our missional efforts through our crusades. You see, we can reach the world with your help. Consider becoming a partner with me and Benlin Ministries. Thank you and God bless. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to the show, The Breaker 2.0, where we're believing for a breakthrough in every area of your life. And today, we have a very special topic. Uh, it's close and near dear to my heart. Breakthrough in spiritual realms and realities. And we're going deep today with my special guest from South Africa, Prophet Leon Depria. God bless you, Prophet. Thanks so, so much. So before the break, 
Before the break, we were talking about how you began to access the deeper things of God, how you began to access uh, and have breakthrough in spiritual realms and realities. And you talked about honoring these generals. Why is that so important? Well, honor gives you access into their adereth, into their mantle. So when I say adereth, I mean mantle. Adereth is the Hebrew word for the prophet's mantle. So, so honor is the is the currency of heaven like you said and it also gives access you can never access what you criticize you can only access what you honor and you can only tap into what you honor you can never operate in an anointing that you attack you can only operate an anointing that you honor so i believe in the language of honor and honor allows us then to receive visitations from god uh, pastor ben and then once we receive a visitation from god there are certain keys on how to respond and this is where people miss it you see a lot of people think that they can go into their room and pray and experience god and we can we have the inner anointing we have the inner presence but there's a manifest presence and the location of the anointing is upon the anointed so uh, the location of the anointing where would you find the anointing you would find it on vessels whom god has anointed so there's a way to buy oil i'm not speaking of buying the anointing with money but we buy the anointing with honor so the currency is honor we go to vessels who carry the anointing what oil produces we honor them and we honor that mantle and the oil is released to us and then once that comes god begins to have favor allows you to enter uh, uh, allow you to come in and then you enter into a realm where we call the god visitations now when god visits you and his presence comes a lot of people don't know how to recognize and how to respond we first need to recognize you know i believe it was luke 19 4, 4, 43 where it says that that jesus came and they never recognized the hour of his visit and because they didn't recognize the hour of his visitation, these curses came upon them. It also says that he was in this world, though he was not of this world, but he came into this world, but the world knew him not in John 1.10. So there's a time when we, God's visitation, his presence can come and we can miss it. Uh, and Or there's a time when his presence and his visitation can come and we can grab a hold of it. And when God visits a man, there are peculiar things that happen. Now, I know that we don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to know if I could maybe just share five or six things that immediately happens yes, when please. God visits a man. Yes, please, absolutely. Talk to us, brother. So, 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 so obviously, when we honor, we get importation. When we get importation, we have the key, the access to go into a realm and a dimension and to tap into the mantle of other great men of God. But it's only the starting point. You know, that's not the end goal. It's not the end result. It's the starting point. So it is the place where God then begins to visit you. And when God visits you, uh, we call it the visitation of God. There, there is... It, it requires a response. I call it the constraint. It is to, it is the, it is the Greek word anakatso, which means to violently, aggressively, passionately, desperately grab a hold of his presence and pull it into your life. So the moment you sense the anointing, you want your spirit must be trained to grab a hold of it and pull it into your life. The moment you do it, there's the first sign that will come upon your life is you'll immediately have a strong desire in your diaphragm, in your spirit man, in the matrix of your womb, in the solar plexus of your spirit man, it is a desire, it's like this inner pulling towards prayer. And we can, I can go through so many scriptures with this, but you begin to get that, what I call a strong desire. The moment you get that desire, you begin to be, you're able and you're given the grace by God to respond with prayer. And a strong spirit of prayer comes upon you. The Bible says that the spirit of grace and supplication is poured out upon us. Now, it is a spirit of grace which is very powerful it's still something totally different meaning we actually need grace from god in order to pray no one can pray without god pulling us in fact uh king david says revive us O lord so that we may call upon your name meaning we cannot call upon your name without you reviving us we need that reviving power first that pulling that desire so then the spirit of prayer the second thing is the spirit of prayer comes upon us then the third thing that begins to happen on a man who whom god visits is a force field begin to take place around them. I call it the glory, the epikahitso, the shadow of God begins to remain. The cloud comes upon them. They begin to be an open heaven, a walking open uh, Eden, a walking open heaven. It's like a force field. It's like a presence around them because now they spend their, they have time in prayer. They have time in worship. So wherever they go that you can feel God around them. I call it a force field. That force field's vicinity can be increased. You know, the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastics 11 verse 3, it says that if the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. So, uh, 
so when you are full of that, you will empty yourselves upon everyone. Now, the moment you have that force field, Romans 8 verse 28 comes into action. It comes into play. And the Bible says that, you know, and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. That verse does not apply to everyone. It only applies to those who are in his purpose and who are in this force field, this realm of blessings. So now it doesn't matter. Anything that everyone throws at you is turned around for your good when you have that force field because it hits the presence and the glory that is around you and it's turned for good. So criticism comes and it just pushes you into a higher level. So, But you must have that force field around you. The fourth thing that happens is that God begins to change things for you. We see how Jacob was left alone and he wrestled with God. And the moment he wrestled with God, his name was changed and his identity was changed from Jacob to Israel. Uh, you know, we see how his brother Esau tried to kill him. But yet when his brother Esau came to him, he no longer wanted to kill him. He just hugged him because he no longer found Jacob. He found Israel. So then we see the fifth thing that happens is that God commands his blessings upon our lives. We see Psalm 133. So now you're in this force field, you're in this place of spending time, God visits you. Now the blessings are commanded to you. People are coming and putting into your bosom. People, You know, the bosom is actually the New Testament word for a debtor, for the mantle, which means mm. that once you begin to embrace your mantle, people begin to put into your mantle. People sow into your mantle. This is the irreversible blessing. God commands his irreversible blessing. Whom God has blessed, he, no man can reverse verse and it cannot be reversed so you understand now but you are the blessing of god and then after you you receive the commanded blessing we go into the last step which is you you are you become the blessing of god wherever you go wherever you walk you know the bible says that abram was blessed by god and the bible says that everyone that blesses him will be blessed those who bless you will be blessed and those who curse you will be ble- will be cursed but in galatians it says if you are christ then you are Abraham's seed and your heirs according to the promise, which means as we walk in this place, everyone that blesses us gets blessed. Everyone that curses us gets cursed. I believe this is the highest realm of the place of a visitation of God. So what happens when we honor, we receive importation is the starting point for a visitation. And then I gave now six things that happens when God visits a man. Wow, that was powerful, prophet. When God visits a man, and this is, I mean, this is biblical. I love everything that you broke down and you shared. And as we're talking about breakthrough in spiritual realms, realities, I have to ask you this question, prophet, because I know our friends, viewers are watching and saying, but is that for me? Is that for the the mom uh, who's taking care of her kids? Is that for the business owner? Or is that only for you? Because you're a prophet. You're an anointed called a vessel of God. And what is your, your answer to those people that they may be questioning and saying, oh, that's only for people in the Bible, or that's only for anointed vessels of God. Is this for everybody, prophet? Is this available? Well, you know, for Catherine Kuhlman said something. She said, she said, she believed she was never called as a fivefold minister. She really just believed she was a normal believer who had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Wow. So, you know, what are we speaking now? It's not for apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. The ministry, they are just there to equip the work, for, the saints for the work of the ministry. Jesus gave this commandment. He's, Jesus spoke to his disciples and said, me and my father will come and make my house and make a dwelling in you. No, the, you know, um, I never knew. I knew I was called as a prophet. I never knew what a prophet meaning. But when I said I never started off with these great manifestations, I had to press into it. So you might be a house mom. You might be a doctor. You might be a, in a professional career. You might be a businessman. You can carry the manifest glory of God upon your life. And I believe that the globe has become a village. So you can be a house mom. But God, when his anointing come on you like Obed Edom, when Obed Edom hosted the glory of God, his name becomes so well known that he became, he became a known famous name throughout the whole city. Even the king knew who he was. And before that, Obed Edom was actually a poor man. So we see how the moment he hosted the presence and he hosted the glory, his name was made famous. So I believe God wants to make your name famous, not infamous. 
famous, but famous. Your fame will, your name will go before you, but you'll make his name famous. But it's the glory of God. You know, the moment we learn how to host this glory, you will not be able, you can say, I'm a house mom, I'm this. You will not be able to stop your influence because I believe where the power of God is, God will give you influence. Maybe it is with thousand other house moms. Maybe it, maybe it is with other business people, whatever it is, but you have a sphere of influence. But when you carry the cloud and the glory, nothing is impossible. You know, the anointing is for cities. The glory is for nations. The anointing is for cities and the glory is for nations. And God wants to release a fresh anointing over every single one of us. However, you must be hungry, like the prophet said. You must be desperate, be violent, eagerly pursue the things of God, says Apostle Paul. That's the Bible. That's the word of the Lord. Eagerly pursue. Now, prophet, before we release a prayer over the people, I hope all of our viewers have enjoyed this. It's gone so fast. But quickly, how can people find you, follow you on social media and uh, your ministry? Thank you so much. They can just, I mean, they can just search Leon Depria, my name, and I'm sure it'll be on the show, Leon Depria. They can just Google it out of the website, leondepria.com, where they can go and they can partner with us. They can be part of the ministry. They can find me on YouTube. They can follow us on YouTube, on Facebook, on social media. And, uh, you know, uh, and then we have a church called Encounter Church. Um, .co.za, EncounterChurch.co.za, and that is a global online church with many campuses in South Africa as well, and that's how they can follow us. They'll find us on social media, and if they want to get involved, they can go to leondapria.com, our website, become a partner, and that is more prophetic training and prophetic mentorship. Wow, amen and amen. Prophet Leon, let's pray for the next 25, 30 seconds. Let's pray that all of our friends will experience the visitation of God and breakthrough in their spiritual walk. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let a divine visitation. I pray for prophets who to right now, and I pray for divine visitation to visit them wherever they are. Those whose hearts are connected, whose spirits are open. Let them feel and encounter the tangible presence of God, the glory of God, the supernatural power of God. Visit them where they are. Create a secret place with them. Let your hand come upon them. I pray for the blessing to go through this. Let this be a spark for the fire. Let this already let them tap into our mantle now, dead from this moment on, and let this bring impartation and and bring the revelation of honor. And I pray for these promises of the visitation of God to rest upon them. We give you all the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Prophet Leon, wow, that was so rich, so powerful. Thank you for sharing your heart and sharing your story. And we love and honor you, man of God. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you so much. Wow, people of God, I hope you enjoyed Prophet Leon De Priya. Incredible. I mean, I love these shows because they go by so fast, don't they? But I hope you caught a hold of it, you grabbed a hold of it, because this is available for you. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker 2.0, where we're believing for a breakthrough in every area of your life. And today, my special guest, Prophet Leon, the Priya from South Africa, we talked about breakthrough in spiritual realms and realities. Get ready for a fresh visitation. God bless you. Until next time.